everyone. This is Babin Lots. Welcome to some more Homeworlds commentary. Today I've got Simon Nar versus Fiendmonger. This is another match from the 2024 Great Homeworlds Tournament qualifying round. These are the two players that qualified from group number three, I believe. Um, Simon's going first. Simon picks a uh, red Goldilocks. Um, it's interesting. I, I definitely associate red stars now with uh, with older players, and, and Simon has been playing a very long time. Maybe their habit, habits haven't changed. Maybe they haven't needed to. Maybe Simon's just that good. Oh, spicy. Fiendmonger takes a medium yellow Gemini, making this a microverse. The homeworlds are connected to each other. Um, I wonder... It, it's possible Fiendmonger will find a, a way to make this a really quick win with their their yellow star you have to be so careful especially if you don't start out with a yellow in a microverse okay simon trades for yellow right away that's good fiend takes a little red <clears throat> red of course is going to open up into mediums sooner yeah so fiend is going to stick with the reds trying to get their, that medium is going to simon going to huh That strikes me as really quite an odd move. So usually, when I when I see this kind of thing, just throwing in a, a ship into an opponent's system, where it's bound to be captured, it's because your opponent is also trying to get more ships of that same color, and you both give yourself more room to build that color, and you are hampering your opponent. But in this case, Fiend is working on red. Simon isn't threatening to capture anything. Simon just wants more space. They don't want to deal with that small. I'm surprised. It, it seems to me like Simon should have just moved that to any kind of medium system anywhere to give themselves more room to build safely. They're, instead, they're handing Fiend a, a ship. But maybe Simon is, is certain that the that if Fiendmonger captures now, that it's a waste of their time. Let's see if Simon commits to this. No, I take it back. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't like that move. Uh, I think overall it wasn't the best, but another build I think is good. Okay. So Fiend um, won't have access to a small yellow anytime soon. But if Fiend builds that medium red, which they're expected to do and did, now they can uh, they can trade that medium red for yellow if they'd like. And they, Fiend isn't going to want to get locked out of uh, yellow forever, I'm sure. Yeah, Fiend takes the trade. Simon's got... Uh, medium yellow available now. Oh, and instead of building the medium yellow, they're discovering a medium yellow. That's good. Um, opening up the larges, uh, which Fiendmonger can't build immediately, because if Fiend builds a, a large yellow at home, of course Simon will just move in the little yellow for the overpopulation. Um, but Fiend can just move to this medium yellow to a new system and then build uh, one of the Y3s. So it really doesn't slow... Well, hmm. No, nope. nope. <laughs> this is my problem. Okay, I'm slow to see the green sacrifices. Um, so Fiend would like to build one of these Y3s, but I think Simon's going to sacrifice G3 and build all three of the Y3s. Yep, okay. And... This is why Simon is uh, quite a good player. All right, so Fiend now is down by <laughs> two large ships. Oops. Um, Simon needs to get some red before before they come up, become a real threat. But uh, that could happen pretty quickly here. Simon... Yeah, so this is more the type of situation where I think moving a, a sacrificial small and 
sacrificing in the uh, in a loose sense. Sacrificing the small kind of makes sense. Well, no, because that that Y two wasn't available to build until Simon Nar moved away from that Y two star. If both players had been competing for the yellows already, then moving this in here to gum up Hoon's uh, attempts to build yellows would have made more sense. I don't. Hmm. Kind of an odd one. Yeah, Hoon takes it. Now what? Maybe what Simon really wanted was to put a Y2 back in the bank to block access to the, the Y3 build. Hmm. I don't really know. This is I, I think if Simon had wanted to plug up the bank with that move, they should have traded one of their smalls for another color, green or blue. Okay, Fiend. Taking some red. Simon now going after green, still ignoring the red. Um, Simon's going to need to get some red before too long here, or it's going to turn into a problem. Maybe Simon really wanted to make it a yellow. Uh, maybe they wanted to trade in for a medium red instead of a large, but... I don't. I, I'm I'm nervous that Simon delayed this long. Okay, they, now they've got a red. Okay, Fiend spreads out their reds. I guess they want more room to build. Uh, Cobol is really not that vulnerable to invasion because the colors of the ships match the colors of Simon's larges that they might choose to move in. Simon now spreading out the yellow. Fiend thinks it's ready time for a shopping spree. I'm a little surprised they're putting the large in Tatooine instead of Kobol, since Kobol's got more ships. Um, no, but the colors are still good defenses. Uh, but if Simon were to trade one of these for a blue or a green say, trade the, the Y3 for green, then it would be an excellent invader. Uh, Simon, yeah, also gets a shopping spree and cleans out the yellow. All right, then. You know, I, I just realized a few videos back, my, uh, my sound, someone was saying my sound was too quiet, and it may still be too quiet. I think the real reason, I, I usually record when people are asleep in the house and I'm trying not to talk too loud, but I think I just realized that for a while, for a few videos at least, I had been using some extra software to, to boost my, uh, to boost the sound, and I'm, I'm not using that right now. Um, so I'm going to try to talk just a little louder, just in case. I'm looking at the sound bar on my re on my recording software, and it's not going all that high. All right, so I'm I'm talking a little louder now. Okay, Fiend wants to get into the green. Yeah, Simon has been trading away their greens or sacrificing their greens, so they've Simon's down to just one green, but Fiend can uh, get in and be competitive. Uh, Putting the R2 back in the bank, Simon could build that, but they'd have to sacrifice their only green for it. They could trade away the Y2. Um, this isn't a good time for Fiend to build to uh, to build yellow, so yeah, trading the Y2 for R2 looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Fiend sort of spreading out the red. Changing from a 3 and 1 concentration to a 2 and 2. A little less vulnerable to catastrophe now. Okay, Simon, now with that uh, Y2... And I mean, not that Fiendmonger has actually spread out the yellows to prepare to build the Y3, but... Um, 
yeah, it's a, it's a safe time to put that Y3 back in the bank. And now Simon has got a, a large of a color that can't immediately be overpopulated if they move into Kobol with an invasion. So Fiendmonger, I think, sees the problem. They're starting to evacuate Kobol. And, oh, I was going to say something. I think, I think this game illustrates how it can be quite difficult to finish winning a game even once you've you've been ahead in material a lot. Simon's been far ahead in material for a long time, but it can be difficult to close the game out. Um, because Simon got their material advantage with a, a green, a big green sacrifice, a shopping spree, Simon didn't have much color variety left, and Simon has ha been having to do the bank dance. That's a, that's a term now. Uh, to guard against Fiendmonger, cleaning up any colors, diversifying while maintaining the material advantage. And now, okay, Simon gets another shopping spree, cleans out the red, the yellows again, and also takes another little green. Yeah, since Fiend has, has spread out the yellows, Fiend was going to start being competitive for the, the bigger ships, and in particular, Fiend has a G2, if Simon hadn't done this, uh, Fiend could, Fiend might have sacrificed the G2 to build both the medium and large yellows, and then Fiend would actually be in a pretty good position, so that's a good, good time for Simon's shopping spree. Okay, Fiend maybe wanting to get ahead in the greens, building some more, but Simon is still a turn ahead in green, spreading them out. Simon puts a red back in the bank. That's a red that I don't think Fiend cares about very much. Yeah, good time for an invasion. Uh, there's no yellow left in the bank for Fiend to build into an overpopulation for this. Fiend doesn't have enough yellows in other places. So Fiend's really got to evacuate. They could sacrifice the Y1 to evacuate two ships. Simon is going to have to sacrifice an R2 in order to capture anything. So they're going to have a, a perfectly free um, capture action if you're comparing the situations where there's one versus two ships here to capture. I don't think I'm communicating that very clearly. Um, but I think it makes more sense for Fiend to put... I'm saying this is a good time for Fiend to sacrifice the Y1 for that in order to run away rather than just letting it be captured, because Simon is going to be sacrificing the same ship for the capture, whether there's one or there's two. Yeah, but Fiend commits, and Simon gets both. Little material gain for Simon, adding to their lead. Fiend sacrifices the G2 for two red builds, cleaning out the bank again. Fiend's got a nice red advantage, but they don't have the large ships to protect everything. Teofel is, is vulnerable now. Yep, and Simon moves in. Simon's still got an R2 because they just captured one. Hmm. This, I think, is a very poor move. Uh, Fiend not only leaving Tatooine open to invasion, but also putting three reds in their home, including both motherships. Uh, those can be overpopulated. I think that's bad. Yeah, Fiend takes it back, builds blue. Fiend is opening up the, the large blues. Fiend might get a comeback out of this. But Simon's cleaning up everything else. Yeah, Fiend has retracted to... Uh, th this is something that I, I don't actually see happen very often, but it's it's theoretically always in the background. You can really only permanently control as many colonies as you have large ships. Anything else, if your opponent is mobile and you don't have the, the wherewithal to threaten overpopulations to the invaders, your opponent's just going to clean up all of your colonies that don't have large protectors. So we've seen F Fiendmonger shrunk back to two 
systems because they have two large ships. Um, fiend trading red for green. I, if I were fiend, I would spread out the blues and prepare to build the the B three. Simon also trading for green. It opens up the larges, and Simon has uh, very gradually spread uh, greens across the universe, little little life seeds, preparing to build those larges. Um, if Fiend spreads out now, they might get to build one of them. But Simon's going to build, build a G3, yeah. And Fiend now gets to build a B3. Uh, honestly, I think, well, uh, I think Fiend should seriously have considered building both B3s, sacrificing the G2 to do it, even though Simon would walk away with a, a near green, green monopoly. Um, I think Fiend needs the larges more than they need green specifically. The bank's close to empty. Um, well, I mean, close-ish. Uh, the factory isn't going to be doing Simon as much good as it would at other times. Yeah, Simon does do the factory. They pick up the last green and the R2. Uh, and choosing to put three here. Um, yeah, Fiend could overpopulate those, but it would cost Fiend their only yellow, which Simon could immediately rebuild, and Fiend would be out of yellow. That would... <laughs> that, that stinks. Okay. Oh, Fiend's going to do it? Wow. Okay. I I think Fiend should actually be building the B3 instead. Um <laughs> This uh, this gets rid of Fiend's last yellow, which Simon's going to rebuild. Simon has the green advantage, and so even though Simon doesn't actually have a um, a factory anymore, Simon's going to be rebuilding faster. Simon just has more places to build. Simon can safely build in uh, three systems. They've got green right now. Um, so I think those are a few things that work against Fiendmonger here. Uh, even though it was a material gain. Yeah, Simon rebuilds that Y2. Fiend is completely locked out of yellow. Yeah, building the B3 is about the best you can do here, I guess. Simon working on the greens now. Okay, Fiend making a little a little threat. Not, uh, not a very strong one. That little yellow can just run away. Yeah, and taking things out of the bank. Red is... Um, uh, yeah, red... Hmm. I think there would, wouldn't have been anything wrong with that little yellow going to Earth. Or, frankly, to anywhere. Uh, since Fiend has no yellow anywhere, even three yellows together is safe. Um, yeah, Fiend can get that R2, um, but that puts Fiendmonger's mothership in, uh, danger of overpopulation, and, uh, oh, no, this, yeah, this is, uh, this is fatal, I believe. So if Fiend commits to this, what happens next? Let me uh, grab my whiteboard. Simon, say Simon, or sorry, say Fiend commits to this. Simon sacrifices Y3, moves in one red, and then moves in a second red in one, two moves for the overpopulation. Fiend doesn't have a mothership in this position. And Simon can roll in with a... Uh, Let's say uh, yellow. Red doesn't really matter all that much, actually. Um, Simon sacrifices Y2 to move in with, let's say, a Y3 to Fiend's home. Uh, Fiend only has one turn to prepare for that, 
and they have no yellow anywhere, so they can't recall one of their flagships to get home. That can't happen. Uh, so Fiend's going to be without a mother uh, mothership on their next turn. Yeah, they commit. Okay, does Simon take the uh, fleet demolition? No. Just spreading out the greens. All right, Fiend doing their best to compete for the greens. Builds a medium, leaves the larges open for Simon. And Fiend can't build that that large. Oh, Fiend, uh, Fiend passes. I wonder if that's a resignation or if that's a misclick. I'm going to guess it's a resignation because having no yellow is really brutal. Yeah, they pass again. Um, just waiting for some... And the graphics are going a little glitchy. If anybody's interested in a technical explanation for why that happens and why it's the best I could do, <laughs> I'll tell you that at some time. Simon, interestingly, moving in an R3? <clears throat> I guess, well, this is okay, I suppose. Why is this okay? Well, let's let's first let's see if Simon commits. They do. Okay, so Fiend can simply capture this, and afterward, Simon can sacrifice, let's say, a Y three, to move. Okay, so let's say Fiend does nothing this turn. Simon sacrifices Y three to move. Well, oh, well, okay, no. Let's <laughs> let's do the obvious thing. Fiend captures this invading Y three. That's Pretty obvious that's what needs to happen. Okay, Simon sacrifices Y3 to get, move in one, two reds, and then move in, let's say, Y3 this way. No, Simon's not going to want to get rid of their mothership. Okay, so Fiend captures this. Simon sacrifices this Y3 to move in one, two, overpopulation of the reds. Sorry, yeah. and move in this Y3. If Simon moves in their mothership, then it would actually be a problem for Simon because Simon would have no... Well, problem's not an exaggeration. But Simon wouldn't have any larges at their home. Fiend could move a, a medium. Fiend could move a medium from their home into Simon's home and potentially threaten to start capturing stuff, Simon would have to re reinforce, and that's a nuisance. Um, so this, I think, is th this combination of moves here, I think, is the right way to go. Sacrifice this yellow, move in this large to Fiend's home. But but uh, what I was trying to get to is Simon doesn't have any red anymore, but Fiend doesn't have any yellow, so Fiend can't reinforce. Simon is going to have to take a turn to, to trade, let's say... Um, a G3 for a red 3 that will be in back in the bank at that point. Um, but Fiend can't get a large ship back to their home in time to, to defend. So I believe this is a, a sound invasion. Okay, Simon, or Fiend. Yeah, Fiend simply capturing. I think Fiend was, was, may we saw the sacrifice there. Fiend may have been thinking what I always say, that you can't slow push a red catastrophe. They may have been trying to sacrifice the red to reduce the red concentration so that what Simon is about to do uh, couldn't happen because there would only be one red left in Fiend's home. But Fiend didn't have a second large ship, so the once Fiend sacrificed the red three, there was nothing to capture with. Yeah. So Simon sacrificing the Y3 that I predicted, and they move in the Y3 from the colony. Yes, good plan, Simon. You think like me, at least this time. And now Fiend, unless I'm very much mistaken, can't get a large to their home in any way. Now, best they can do is trade for a yellow that would give them some yellow, move, yellow availability in the future. But it's too late because Simon is traded for red now. And Fiend, Fiend can reinforce their home, I guess. Yeah, they can build. Uh, but 
Simon's going to take all but one ship of fiends. And uh, what can fiends do now? Really nothing. Well, yeah, okay, they can move in the red. They've got the they've got a mothership again. They can uh, capture things that don't run away. This isn't a sticky position for Simon, is it? This is Simon. Surely Simon just needs to keep moving stuff in. I well. Hmm. It looks great for Simon, but Simon <laughs> Simon hasn't got enough red. Um, and Fiend can sacrifice their R2 to capture both of those invading larges. Okay, this, this turned out harder for Simon than I expected. Um, and Simon hasn't got the blue to finish off Fiend's um, blue star. Gosh, what does Simon do here? I don't know. I'm ready to find out. Okay, sacrificing the Y3. To move in. Let's see. To move a, the Y2 into Fiend's home. Move a green 2 to a new red 3 star. And then join up with a little yellow. Wow, that leaves a Y3 in the bank for fiends to build. I should have gone a lot slower. I thought the game was completely over when Simon had two larges in fiends' home and fiend didn't have a large in their home. I should have gone slower because I think Fiend played it as bad as well as bad as about as well as they could. It it doesn't seem like Simon should have come out of that from into such a bad position here. I was counting on Simon to win that in three more moves, but here it is several turns later, and Simon doesn't have any red to finish this off. Okay, Fiend now sacrificing G two, trying to. I don't think... Well, is that the way to go? Trying to clear out the rest of the blue. So the idea here is if Fiend never gets another... If, sorry, if Simon never gets another blue ship, Simon can't win by overpopulating Fiend's blue star. Simon, And as soon as Simon gets a red, Fiend can simply capture... The B3, that's the only thing capture, threatening to capture the only, red sh the only ship that Fiend has in their home. Okay, Simon now sacrificing Y2 to pull back their invasion fleet. Wow! Pulling, pulling out from this invasion, this invasion that didn't quite work. I... <laughs> Uh, I had that long discussion with the whiteboard and everything about how, oh, if you overpopulate the reds, you come in with the rest and this is going to work out. Um, but then somehow it didn't. I, uh, that's fascinating. Okay. So <laughs> Simon calls the retreat and Fiend is, uh, Building up red, I think this is this is good. If you can lock Simon out of the reds. Okay, Simon trying to uh, clean up everything else. Getting, uh, sacrificing the G3, building a bunch of yellow and rebuilding a G2. So Fiend, I think, should be tempted to trade for that G3 someplace. The trouble is anywhere they do, that makes them more vulnerable to overpopulation. It would also put, you know, either a B3 that Simon could build or a Y3 that Simon could build back into the bank. But I think what Simon is actually after here is to simply put more blue into the bank. I think Simon might sacrifice a Y3 
to move, let's say, these two greens and this green into Tatooine to supernova the whole system, putting two blues back in the bank that Simon can then build. That's my thought. All right, uh, Fiend now. Trying to clean up the rest of the red before there's more trouble. Yeah, if Simon has no... Boy, yeah, Simon's got no red anywhere. Okay, sacrificing the blue. Doesn't want that blue to get captured. To trade for a red. Okay, Simon's in, in pretty good shape again. They've got red, but it's it's still three large ships to three. The other material is, is fairly similar. You've got to get down to... You've got to drill down to the colors, really. And to some extent, the ship distribution before you figure out who's ahead. Uh, Simon's got a couple of extra medium ships over Fiend, I guess. So yeah, Fiend's lack of yellow, Simon's lack of red are both interesting. And Fiend only having one ship at home means that any kind of invasion they may have to respond to it pretty immediately. Okay, putting one, putting that B3 in the bank to get a Y3. Wow, this is, <laughs> this has been a good game. I, I think this might be my favorite of the qualifier games I've cast. Although it, I, I can't, you may have watched them recently, but I cast them long enough ago that I can't remember exactly how they went down. But this is, I'm really interested to see who can uh, who can pull this out here? Okay. Simon, okay, taking that G3. Simon's been, been hungry for blues for a while, I think. At, at least I would have been. I would have been tempted to maybe even build that B1. No, it leaves the B3 open. Yeah, the, the green the green's the right move. Cuts cuts a si uh, fiend back out of green entirely. Fiend. Oh, gee, is it go time someplace? Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Supernova-ing. <laughs> wow. Supernova. Most of Simon's ships. That's about half of them. Wow. Okay. Leaves Fiend a little crippled as well. Okay. Counting the material. Two larges each. Simon's got three mediums to Fiend's two. Simon's got four smalls to Fiend's two. Simon definitely ahead in material. And Simon has blue, which Fiend doesn't, but Simon has no red, which is really spooky. And if, si if Simon trades for red right now, it's going to have to be at a place with a red star that Fiend might be very happy to overpopulate. Yeah. Trading it at home is actually the safest here. Um, I think Fiend should push a, a little red up into a medium system threatening to overpopulate Simon's mothership. Yeah, that'll... Oh, that's good. That's good. At least I think it is. What... Uh... Fiend on the offensive now. Wow. That little yellow. Do, do you run away the yellow? Yeah, Simon runs away. Does Fiend... So the, the trouble here is that this is... This is a very similar um, material loss for both players. And Fiend... If, if, if Fiend does this overpopulation... and f So similar material loss... When Simon is ahead in material, is uh, kind of a gain. Well, no, it's definitely a gain because Fiend is is actually losing more. It puts Simon in a good material position, but down a star. Um, I was kind of cheering for this to happen because it's exciting. So to be to be clear, I'm expecting Fiend to sacrifice. Y3 to move in one, uh, say two, three times, three red ships to Simon's home, overpopulating Simon's mothership and a home star. I don't like it because Fiend is losing more material at a time when Fiend is already behind in material, and 
um, it's putting a lot of red back in the bank when Simon's lack of red is Fiend's biggest advantage. I think Fiend should not destroy the star. Okay, Fiend didn't. They just moved that green, that red back. Um... That so they moved it into their own home, which is a system connected to Simon's home, but I don't know if this actually improves the possibility of an invasion. And now Yeah, Simon catches up in material sum. If Fiend builds that Y that Ooh, um I don't think this goes anywhere good. So, okay, Fiend is, yeah, and they commit to it. Okay, so Fiend overpopulates one of Simon's stars, losing a bunch of material in the process. You know, they, they didn't even need, Fiend didn't even need to use that, um, oh, did they? Yeah, okay, they, they did need to use the R2 that they, they brought in. They, they could have done that more gradually. They could have done that in two turns. I think I think Fiend actually missed an opportunity to win here. I think there was a win here somewhere. I think if Fiend had moved, done several turns back, you'd have to go. But if, if Fiend had, had rearranged their ships a little differently... And had made it so they they moved in one red, and then Simon presumably captures, and then Fiend sacrifices the R three to move in uh, two reds and their and their mothership, while leaving a, a a little red at home. They could have stopped or started gobbling up Simon's ships, and and I think I think that could have turned into a win, maybe. Um, I'd have to go back, and I usually don't. <laughs> you may have noticed I'm a little lazy with my videos. I just watch the game and, and call out my reactions. That's my my gut tells me that Fiend had a win if they'd if they could take a few turns back. But now I think Simon's got this in the bag because Simon's got much more variety, much more material. Being down a star really doesn't hurt that bad. Yeah, Fiend can can get a blue. And they can move it somewhere where it can build, but oh look, Simon's got a flagship and Fiend doesn't, so Fiend can't protect a colony. Uh, Fiend resigns with the with the homeworld abandonment. Um, wow. Well, that was a very exciting game. Simon had an invasion that almost paid off, uh, but not quite. I think the trouble really started for Fiend when, and Fiend brought it back, but but. They got into a lot of trouble when they didn't see Simon's first yellow shopping spree, where Simon cleared out the whole bank. Um, Simon mostly carried that to victory, but in a few places, Simon was almost entirely caught up. Uh, Simon ended up trying to carry out an invasion, uh, a single star demolition that wasn't worth it, and that was uh, really the nail in the coffin. Anyway... Exciting game. Thanks to both players for uh, participating in the tournament. Um, I'll put a link in the description. You can check out all the games in the tournament if you're, if you're curious. And thanks for watching.